Hello everyone and welcome to episode 57 of the WMA5 series here on the channel as it is going to be the Brazilian Bushido 4 show. Before we get into that we have a lot of pieces of mail to go through as uh, we have 33 pieces of mail to be exact as we got Ben Rothwell, Mark Hughes, and Josh Brennan. They extended their deals with Pride FC. Fedor left Red Devil Sport again after losing in his uh, last fight to Sergei Kurtnerov. He has again left Red Devil Sport. Extended Mirko Kokrop, extended Gilbert Yavel, Carlos Barreto retired, which is kind of nuts as he was part of, obviously, Pride FC from uh, from the early early stages that we had. Uh, he was, I think, 0-6 and six in Pride, I want to say, because, you know, obviously this was his first loss, actually his first loss came before this series started. And he lost to Mark Curry, lost to Tom Erickson, Josh Fournette, Alex Overeem, and Heath Herring, uh, and then he lost to Randy Couture, and Rings, they went on a three-fight losing streak. Ended his career at 14, 11, at 37 years old. Deki Yoshida, Valentin Overeem, Heath Herring, extended their deal. Again, Nick Serra wants to fight Paul Daly. That fight is so fucking one-sided for Nick Serra. Of course he wants that fight. As uh, Andre Velasquez extended his deal. Uh, Mirko Krokop actually left Golden Glory. I thought that was surprising. Kaiti uh, Nakamura extended his deal. Joe Hurley left Lions Den to a falling out with Trey Tellingman. Which, that's huge. Uh, Joe Hurley, who is... Uh, you know, and Pride FC right now is going to make his debut at it in July against Paul Healy. So that's uh, just something to look out for. Is leaving lines in thanks to falling out with Trey Tellingman. Uh, we signed Ebenezer Fontes Barago extended his deal. Obviously, he's not going to be in Pride. He's going to be in rings. Just want to show that. I've extended Alexander Emelianenko. We signed Jace Tahuna, who is, I think, 4-3. Five and three. He's in rings right now just to give him a little something to go through. He's kind of, he's already been in the, the UFC. He started out his career in the UFC. He was zero for three. Then he lost, and then he won five, six straight. Uh, no, five straight. Five straight as uh, two local wins and then uh, against three actual guys. And one was at a Japanese Lodge local show and then two uh, at Jungle Fight, which his last fight was rated fantastic. Let's we'll see how he does. It's Gary Goodrich left Hammer House. And uh, Joe Hurley, you see there, he, he was signed. As uh, we signed Melvin Manhoof, uh, Melvin Manhoof, uh, is, you know, he's been in ring since the beginning of this. Uh, well, actually, no, not since the beginning. Uh, he's uh, He was there in, in June of 99. Then we let him kind of go through. He went through Mecca. He went through M1. Then we signed him in 2003 in the hopes that he would do very well, that we can bring him up onto the uh, the Pride FC roster. But he ended up losing five straight. He lost to Omar Zoliov. He lost to Rodrigo Us. He lost to Chael Sonnen and uh, Jason Mayhem Miller. So, I mean, three of those guys are in uh, Pride FC. So, I mean, at least he lost to those. Then he beat Young Choi, who was a part of uh, Pride FC. He beat Crosley Gracie. And he beat Choney Carter, which is... I mean, if you look at his ratings, besides this one decent fight against Chael Sonnen, since his uh, debut in rings, they've been good to great to even that one fantastic fight with Jason Miller. So I think he deserves to be up here. I love Melvin Manhoof, and I think he's going to add a nice wrinkle to the metal weights where there's not, you know, there's a nice little blend. I think the welterweights and lightweights, you're not seeing a lot of guys that can use the hands very well. Usually you're just seeing a lot of wrestlers and a lot of guys that can take to the ground and do their thing. But in the metal weights, there's still guys that can stand up and really knock somebody out, but uh, not a few. And I think Melvin Manhoof, having the kickboxing background, can definitely add a different uh, dynamic to that middleweight division. As Katsuya Noe left uh, Abiyani Combat Club, Andre Vlaski left AMC Bankerton, uh, Mark Kerr left uh, Lions Den, uh, Vlaski joined the pit, which that's huge for him, Roy Nelson left Minnesota Martial Arts Academy, Mario Sparrow left Damian Maia's Jiu-Jitsu, then he joined Budokan Luta Libre, as Paul Healy uh, left AMC Bankerton and joined Lions Den, so you see two guys leaving AMC Bankerton joining Lions Den, uh, Diego Sanchez, uh, has run into legal problems, has been charged with uh, causing a uh, public disturbance, as uh, be dealing, uh, busy dealing with that for the next month, I believe, as he's uh, dealing with that. Yeah, 22 days, so not uh, not a terrible thing. And then Nick Sarah again winning that fight with Paul Daly, which I don't think it's going to end. And then we extend Czech Congo. Now, on to the actual show for this Brazilian Bushido 4 main event, you see Ron Faircloth is going to take on the champion, Anderson Silva, as the new middleweight champion of the world, Jeremy Horn and Merle of Ninja Hua, get Jason Mayhem Miller and Fabio Maldonado, there we go, Jesus, with Enzo Gracie, Little Nog, uh, Diago, uh, Diago Devarez, and Leonardo Santos, Eddie Alvarez, 
as uh, Leoto Machida's on the, in the prelim. So is uh, Jose Aldo. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy card. You see a lot of, uh, obviously, the Brazilian favorites here, as we're in Brazil, as uh, Anderson Silva looking to make his first defense of the prime middleweight title. Two of the best prime round fighters of the world, as uh, Silva's ranked 6th, Faircloth is 12th, both uh, main eventing for the third time in Pride FC, as Faircloth has submitted three of his last five opponents. First time they have fought, Faircloth's going to have a significant weight advantage, but Silva's going to have the 8-inch reach advantage you see there around Faircloth, as a one lone backer in Rich, 1-6 to six on Blurcat staff pick. I wouldn't count out Ron Faircloth. He's had a couple of uh, big wins here in Pride FC. He's 4-1. and one. He's, His one loss is a debut against Quentin Rambay Jackson, but he's beaten Rich Franklin and Frank Shamrock and Alex Stiebling. That's still you know, a good fight nonetheless. And uh, they, you know, He's rear naked chokes, leg locks. If he can take to the ground, it's going to be great news for him. As for, obviously, Anderson Silva sitting at 13-3-1. He's 9-2-1 in Pride FC with the Lost coming to Frank Shermock, you know, so a guy that uh, Ron Faircloth has beaten, Merlio Ninja Hua, which we're seeing uh, in the co-main event, and then uh, his draw to Quentin Rambay Jacks, which they then knocked out with a kick. As, uh, yeah, I mean, his last four wins, though, no slouches. Quentin Rambay Jackson, Nate Marcotte, Dan Anderson, and Chuck Liddell. Again, so it's kind of fun that they get the fight, because obviously you have Ron Faircloth having that one win against Frank Shermock, but also... Anderson Silva has the one win against Quentin Rambage Jackson. They both have wins against people that they've lost to. That's pretty exciting stuff. Should be a hell of a main event. As Jeremy Gumby Horn taking on Merle on Ninja Hua. Two of the top uh, light heavyweights in the world. Jeremy Horn at 12th. Uh, Merle at 15th. As uh, Hua trains at uh, Hoos Valley Tudo, which Jeremy Horn also will a record of 1-1 one -on -one against other members of that team. As Hua has won three of his last five fights by decision. First time they have fought, and uh, Merlio is 7-0 on the Blurcat staff picks. Merlio at 11-3. Uh, his three losses coming against Quentin Rambage Jackson, Chuck Liddell, and Vitor Belfort. Uh, he's also beaten Frank Shermock and Alex Stiebling. So this is going to be a huge win for either one of these two. As he's, you know, he's beaten Anderson Silva, which is huge. I, you know, Jeremy Horn uh, fell short against Anderson Silva for a nine member. He has a unanimous decision loss at Total Elimination 2003. Uh, he's lost two straight to Nate Marcotte and Chuck Liddell. He also lost to Alex Stiebling, which is not great for, for him. But he has beaten Vitor Belfort, so this is just kind of interesting how uh, all these, uh, the, the top two fights kind of intertwine between each other. But that should be exciting for sure. That's going to be an interesting one. That cool man. It's Jason Mann Miller taking on Fabio Maldonado as uh, both have won three of the last five, but Jason Mann Miller has submitted three of the last five, while Maldonado has won by uh, decision. First time they have fought, as uh, Fabio is going to have a significant weight advantage. Both fighters are making their pride debuts tonight, which is huge for a, a big spot like this. Fabio's 13 and 7. He got signed in 2005, and it's been a year since he's had a, a fight. But uh, when he was in rings, really his biggest wins were against Stefan Bonner and Ebenezer Fontes Baraga. But he hasn't had really that, you know, his last great fight was in Mecca in 2003. The rest has just been decent in rings. We'll see what he can do here against Chase Mann Miller. Who is eight and one? His one loss comes against Ryan Jensen and in Mecca, he uh, beat uh, Jose Lonnie Jones and then Melvin Manhoof in rings, which are they're great and fantastic. Uh, he looks like he likes to win by the rear naked chokes. Got five wins by rear naked chokes. So he, Fabio has got to look out for that. He's taking on the ground. Looks like the Blackcats staff picks have um, Fabio getting the win seven to zero. As Henzo Gracie taking on Lil Nog. As Henzo Gracie has not won in three years since February of two thousand and three. He's 10 7 1 and 1 no contest. He loses here tonight. He's going to be down in rings during the rest of the Gracies as he's 39 years old, too, so he could retire at any minute. Lil Naga, 29. He's 4 and 3. He just lost to Patrick O'Day. He lost to Keith Jardine. He's lost to Rodrigo Gracie, but he's beaten Daniel Gracie. So he's got another Gracie to take on here as uh, first time they have fought, obviously, in Big Nog, or L Big Nog, Lil Nog, rather. He's going to have a saving away advantage. Blurcast stat picks having 7 to 0. He's going to destroy Hinzo Gracie, according to these Blurcast stat picks. As uh, Thiago Tavares taking on Leonardo Santos. As uh, Thiago uh, Tav Tavares has uh, submitted 4 of the last 5. Leonardo Santos has submitted 3 of the last 5. So both you know, submission experts in their own right. As uh, Tavares is 5 and 0. Obviously, his 4 wins against local fighters, and he beat um, Marlon. As a. Uh, at Brazilian Bushido 3, which that was really great. As for uh, Leonardo Santos making his pride debut, this is the first time they have fought, obviously, is 
Uh, he is six and one. He uh, just lost the W in the uh, WC his last fight to Buddy Clinton, but he's uh, before that he was six and zero. Uh, all of his fights were either good to great, obviously with the local fight, you can't really count that, but he had an excellent fight with Charles Diaz. We'll see, though, what happens there with Leonardo Santos, both uh, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, if I remember correctly. Oh, no, uh, Floriano, Brazil, for Tavares, but two Brazilians gonna bail it out of Brazilian Bushido. Makes sense, as Leonardo Santos blur cats that pick 7-0 for him, as Eddie Alvarez versus Jay-Z, uh, I guess, uh, Calvante as, uh, Calavante has finished four of his last five, five, uh, four of his last five opponents. So has Eddie Alvarez. That's the first time they have fought four to three uh, with uh, Cavalante uh, getting the slight advantage over Alvarez. It's, uh, Cavalante four and one. He's zero and one in pride. He lost to BJ Penn at total elimination. That was just a tough draw for him in the lightweight Grand Prix. Eddie Alvarez is uh, one and one. He did win against uh, Sugugumuchi uh, Seo, and then he lost to Takano and Gomi. Uh, so this, I mean, they're two guys who have lost to top, top lightweights. So we should see how they uh, battle that out. There should be a pretty entertaining lightweight battle. Then Lyoto Machida taking on Masatsu Yano, the dragon Lyoto Machida, at uh, 7-0. to zero. He's 3-0. and oh. He has not had a fight. So he's basically had one fight a year. He had a split decision win against Yuki Kano. He beat Monaro Suzuki and Daniel Gracie. So he's uh, here with Masatsu Yano, who is 12-6, uh, and 4-3. In Pride FC, as he just lost to uh, Scott Smith. You see, he beat Ricardo Rona, Masanori Suda before then, and he lost to Quentin Ramray Jackson and uh, Force Griffin, which uh, he's had a couple of poor fights, a very poor fight with Ricardo Rona. Yuki Kondo's split decision was poor. So let's see if uh, Leona Machito can have an exciting bout here in the prelims. As then uh, Spencer King Fisher taking on uh, Jose Aldo, as uh, Jose Aldo making his Pride debut. 7-0 in Blur Cat staff picks. This is his, I believe, he's 2-0. He's had two local fighters, so he's this is the first time he's taken on an actual person. That's not a local fighter. Spencer Kingfisher, who is 7-2, 0-1 in Pride. He just lost to Takano Megomi at a to the total elimination during the lightweight Grand Prix. As uh, he lost to Joe Hurley, too, back at the American Large local show in December of 2003. Should be, uh, should be a hell of a lightweight battle as well. As a seven and two, two and L, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, boxing Jiu Jitsu. So both men that can have, you know, they're we're getting now into the the era of guys being more complete mixed martial artists instead of the guys who are just at one style. So you're seeing it there. As a uh, 29 years old, 19 years old, Jose Aldo, young as hell, five nine, one fifty five, five seven, one sixty one, minus three forty for Jose Aldo, plus two seventy for Spencer Kingfisher there. As uh, should be a hell of a contest, referee. For this bout, Big John McCarthy, who's going to tower over these two short kings. So our judges at ringside, as uh, Aldo gets a good reaction for the fans, he enters the arena, he's, from, uh, he's fighting in front of the home crowd tonight, the fight begins. As Aldo can hit the step left jab, but he scores the right round, that's kicked to the ribs. Aldo moves in closer, looking to open up an attack. Fisher, it looked like he was angling the grapple, he was going to take the initiative. Connects with a nice jab, and it hits Fisher with a leg kick. An exchange of strikes happens right in the center of the ring, when neither can land anything good. As uh, Fisher keeps... Slightly out of range, looking for a chance to dart in and start grappling. As Aldo lands a left hand and catches Fisher with a low kick to the front leg. Both fighters move in and engage. Fisher misses the right cross, leaves himself to be wide open for the counter, which Aldo attacks with a jab and a quick kick. They engage in the center. Fisher misses the big right hand, allowing Aldo to counter with a quick jab. They are followed by a right hook that is ducked. Aldo comes in looking to strike. Showing good hand speed, uh, Jose Aldo lands a flurry of four punches, and but a right head kick is too slow and Fisher catches it. And that's looking for the takedown off the kick. But yeah, Fisher doesn't get it as he can't get him down. Loses control of the leg in the process. There, he can't connect with the step strikes. There's a nice straight right hand by Aldo. The exchange at the center. Misses the jab. But hits the right hand. As Aldo hits a left jab and also gets a glancing blow with a high kick. Connects with a nice jab and hits Fisher with a low kick. There's a, j a jab is wide from Aldo and he hits a nice straight right hand. As Fisher has an obvious limp as he circles. They engage in the center. Misses the jab and hits a right hand. Aldo uses... A left jab and also lands a leg kick. The two combatants meet in the center and start to strike. As Aldo counters the right hand with a low kick. Aldo is starting to slow down touch press. Perhaps conserving low energy. Limping heavily. Fisher is struggling to move around. Aldo comes forward walking down Fisher. Fisher throws a counter jab but misses. Aldo throws a quick one too but doesn't land either blow. Fisher limps around. His leg is now virtually useless thanks to all the damage he's taking those fucking shots from Aldo. I mean 
jab at Stone from all and he lands the right end of the body. Halfway point, Fisher looked like he was going to step in and grab him, but Aldo took the initiative. Again with a leg kick. Unbelievable, as uh, Fisher looked like he was angling the grapple, but again, couldn't take the initiative. Can't connect with the jab, there's a nice straight right hand, Godfrey moves in closer, jab, lands from Aldo, they find something better on the big right. Comes forward, does Aldo again, there's a counter left hand from uh, Fisher, he buys a feint, and it's left wide open, and there's a jab. Uh, he catches Fisher with a low kick to the front leg again, they come together, strike, but neither fighter can land anything damaging. As Fisher's barely able to walk, thanks all these leg kicks. Dear God, as uh, they come together, and uh, Aldo counters the right hand with... With a jab and a vicious kick to the thigh. And he collapses to the ground. He simply can't stand any longer. Winner by leg kick. Jose Aldo. I believe that's the first time we've seen a leg kick fucking TKO. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how you do that. Uh, Jose Aldo just chopping down the tree. Unbelievable. There are so many leg kicks. Nuts. Yeah, that's a bad motherfucker, Jose Aldo. I see that. Thanks his sponsors and also all, all, all of his fans. As uh, Jose Aldo says, he's very happy to cap his pride debut with a win. Last prelim fight. Leoto Machida taking on Azatsu Yano. Leoto Machida as, uh, looking to get another win to his record. Looking to make it 4-0. As shoot the box. Peresta, minus 310, plus 240, 12-6, 30-0. 27 till 30 years old. Let's see what happens here. As Herb Dean's the referee, our judges... Machida gets a good reaction for the fans. He enters the arena. He's fighting from home ground tonight. We are underway. Machida steps in looking to unleash. Connects with a nice jab and then catches Yano with a right hook. Yano comes in looking for the takedown. Yano gets all of a leg, but Machida remains standing, hopping on the other foot. Yano uses the position to drive Machida up against the ropes. He's showing his ability to control his opponent. Yano simply smothers Machida up against the ropes. The exchange trip punches his body for a, about a minute. Using tight body to body control, Yano slowly wearing Machida down by pressing him up against the ropes and leaning all of his weight on him. They remain there for at least 30 seconds, hitting each other with short punches to the body and the side of the head. As Yano tries to look and try and maintain control of his wrestling skills, but Machida works enough space that he can pull clear and circle out. Machida throws a quick one too, but doesn't land either blow. Yano seizes that chance and grabs Machida in a clinch. Yano tries to wrestle Machida backwards up against the ropes, and Yano manages and controls Machida up against the ropes. He's going to press up against the ropes again. They the next minute, so they're engaged in close quarter dirty boxing. Yano looks to try and maintain control via his wrestling skills, but Machida works enough separation to uh, pull clear, circle out, and Machida can't connect with the step strikes. There's a leg kick. Let's see if he can have the same type of success that Jose Aldo did, as there's a punch, but Yano avoids it. Yano comes in and grabs Machida in the clinch. Clinch with Machida. Yano looks to try to take him down. Machida blocks the takedown attempt and takes control of the grapple. With the control of the clinch, Machida tries to complete a takedown. Yano blocks the takedown attempt and takes control of the grapple. Yano's looking to muscle Machida backwards against the ropes. Machida outwrestles him, though. Clinch with Yano. Machida looks like he was trying to take him down. Yano cannot step the takedown and gives up side control. Machida pounds with rights, but doesn't take much do it doesn't do much damage. Yano tries to transition the guard, but he can't manage it. Machida throws a few right hands, but it's clearly just trying to catch his breath. Blocks a attempt to pull guard. He tries to pound on Yano, but none of the blows have any degree of power. Machida blocks Yano as he tries to transition the guard. Unloves the big right hands with Machida, but Yano covers up well. Blocks a attempt to pull guard. Again, trying to pound on Yano, but all the blows are currently dealt with. Yano tries to transition the guard, but can't manage it. Machida throws a few right hands, but it's mainly just trying to catch his breath. Yano tries to pull guard on Machida, but doesn't get anywhere with the attempt. Final minute now. Machida pounds away with rights, but fails landing significant. Machida blocks Yano as he tries to transition the guard. Machida pounds away on Yano, but can't land anything significant. Yano tries to move to guard, but Machida doesn't allow it. And that is the end of the first round. That's obviously all... Uh, well, I mean, you say that, but you see the jabs when they were standing. Yano landed a little bit more, but uh, it, when it was taken to the ground, it was all Leo and Machida. As the final bell for the second round, Yano comes in looking for the takedown. Almost stops the takedown, but he's off topic on one leg while Yano has hold the other one. Trying to, with Machida not going down, Yano just settles to push him up against the ropes. Now his back is up against the ropes. He can't really do much thanks to the control that Yano is exerting there. As the grueling grappling contest continues for the next six, uh, yeah, 60 seconds with both fighters looking to avoid leave, leaving in the opening. But she does press up against the ropes. They remain there for the, at least 30 seconds, hitting each other with short punches of the body and the side of the head. Showing his ability to control opponents, Yano smothering Machida up against the ropes. 30 seconds passes and with the two opponents pressed up against cl pressed up close and exchanging short punches of the body and the side of the head. Referee Herb Dean thinks that there's been too little progress, brings him back to the center. Taking a few gulps of breath, Machida's given the first inning, starting to tire a touch. Combo then ends with a head kick attempt to fail to land for Machida. Yano comes in and grabs Machida in a clinch. Yano's trying to muscle Machida up against the ropes. 
The animal can't do it, though, as Machida gets a more dominant position in the grapple. Machida looks to set up a trip takedown as he's got the takedown. As uh, now he can't do nothing but pull half guard. Machida throws a few strikes, clearly just slowing things down. He's pretty much won the, the fight at this point. He's just going to make sure that he can keep him down. But uh, Machida can't control Yano using a underhook as the basis for a nice piece of the grappling to see them standing back up. Now they're standing and clenched. As Yano is looking to push him up against the ropes, he does. He can't do it though. As uh, Machida did it well, as uh, defended it well, as using his wrestling skills, Yano is trying to push Machida up against the ropes. He can't do it though, and ends up being out wrestled in the grapple, and that's the end of the fight. Yeah, what? You have decision. Lee. Oh, we looks like we're gonna have a split. There's Yano for one, and Machida for the other one, and oh my boy, oh boy, Mazatu Yano wins by split decision. I mean, you see the strikes for the entire fight. It is close. Like, it is... It's 53 to 60. Yano did outstrike him. But, the takedown's 2 for 3. It's 0 for 3 on Yano. I think Machida controlled the entire fight. Yep. Has another perfect record by the Dust thanks to poor decisions by the judges. In my opinion. As, yep. Mazda to Yano, 13 to 6. The other Machida, 3 and 1. Thanks everyone connected to Perista for having a prayer for this fight and the sponsors supporting him financially. Mazatu Yano says it was a tough fight and gives a show of respect to Lyoto Machida. As the now for the main card, Eddie Alvarez taking on Cavante Jay-Z as a 4 and 1, 5 and 1. Obviously, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Rio de Janeiro, but still 5, both 5'9, both 161, and both 22 years old. Boxing, wrestling, Luta Libre. No teams for both men, minus 130, minus 140. This is going to be a tough one to call. See what happens as Cecil Peoples is uh, the referee for this fight. Judges at ringside. is about to fight in front of my home crowd. Cavalante, unsurprisingly, gets a loud ovation for the crowd as he makes his entrance. That's the opening bell. Alvarez throws a punch, but Cavalante was, uh, avoids it. Cavalante seizes that chance, grabs Alvarez in the clinch. Using his wrestling skills, Cav Cavalante is trying to push Alvarez up against the ropes. Now, it isn't going anywhere, though. Still just trying to push him up against the ropes. Finally, he gets control of him up against the ropes. Now he's uh, with the ropes trapping Alvarez. Calvante looking at, for a trip takedown by sweeping the leg. Excellent outside leg trip sees Alvarez gets thrown to the mat. And Cavalante has no problem getting side control. Cavalante hitting a knee straight to the ribs. He's trying to move from side control to mount now. Alvarez desperately tries to fight the, the mount. They find themselves scrambling for position. Scramble results in Cavalante being on his back pulling guard. Alvarez, Alvarez rather fires off some strikes but doesn't do anything significant. Uh, damaging wise as the attack does see. Alvarez get pushed away, though, right out of the guard. He's now standing. Alvarez kicks Cavalante to the thigh. In comes Alvarez looking to get some form of ground control. Cavalante comes quickly, moves in quickly, scrambling for position before Alvarez gets a hold of him. Cavalante ends up in side control. Cavalante throws a few right hands to the body, blocks an attempted roll, uh, attempted full guard, rather, not a roll. As Cavalante now looking for Kamora. Alvarez defends himself well and has no need of, as in... No, uh, need of uh, danger, Jesus Christ. There's no danger, Jesus. As Alvarez tries to transition the guard, became manage it. As the Cavalante put, punches down at Alvarez, but they're easily taking on the gloves. Alvarez is trying to transition the guard, became manage it. And there's a knee strike to the ribs. Lack of progress forces the referee to stand back up. It's now halfway point. There's a takedown attempt from Calavante. Uh, Alvarez sprawls brilliantly, not only preventing the takedown, but pushing Calvante down onto his hands and knees as Alvarez fires away with punches, but does, uh, but Calvante doesn't take any undue damage. Taking an advantage of a pause, Calvante stands back up as now he comes in looking for a takedown. Again, Eddie Alvarez, Eddie Alvarez, this brawls brilliantly, not only preventing the takedown, but pushing Calvante down onto his hands and knees. Pounds away, but Calvante is in trouble with the strikes. He gets him back to his feet. Alvarez has no separation, though, at all, and has control of the resulting clinch. So Al Alvarez gets himself gets out-wrestled in the grapple, and Calvante takes control. Using his wrestling skills, Calvante is trying to push Alvarez up against the ropes. Now he's back up against the ropes. He's trying to go down low, take him out with, uh, take out both legs there. As It's not pretty, but he forces Alvarez down to the ground and ends up in a turtle-up position. Calvante with a kick to the body, but Alvarez is back up to, out of the range too quickly before he can land it. Calvante shoots him with a takedown. Again, stopping it brilliantly. This is Alvarez forcing him down on his hands and knees. Looking to get, looking to, uh, Gets up sharply, seeing that Alvarez is about to throw a kick to the ribs. As he's taking out a 10 from Alvarez, and again, can't get past the great sprawl. These two men are just tick for fucking tack. Just uh, sprawling brilliantly every time there's a takedown attempt. They're pretty much not able to land anything as far as strikes-wise. Uh, where you can see where which who you know is going to have the advantage here. It's going to really come down to who's landing the most sh shots. 
They come together and trade leather, but neither fighter really doesn't any undo damage at the end of the first round. So yeah, it looks like Eddie Alvarez. I mean, it is tough though. You say it could be Eddie Alvarez, but you see Galavante is two for five on takedowns, so and it's tough. It's a tough one. And he did go try to go for a Kamora. It's gonna come down to the second round. So there's takedowns on ten from Calavante right out of the gate. Almost stops the takedown, but is left hopping on one leg while Calavante holds the other one. Now he's looking to push him against the ropes. Now he's gonna go down low, grab both legs. He does so. Now Alvarez has to pull guard. Calvante attempts to pass guard and gain better position. He passes guard, but he can't secure control. Secure side control as Alvarez starts to scramble for position. As Alvarez ends up having to pull guard, losing out in the scramble. Now he's trying to pass guard. He finds himself unable to pass the guard, though. Now he's trying to pull Calavante in close, peppering him with short strikes, but he can't do it. Calavante pounds away with right, so it fails landing significant. As Alvarez is trying to pull Calavante in close, and pepper on strikes. But he can't again. I mean, this is just halfway point. Lack of progress being made. Referee stands back up. As Alvarez steals himself. Yeah, steals himself to attack once more. He is rushing desperately short time of in need of a finish. The first time Aldi Alvarez is starting to breathe a little heavier now. It's Calvante slowing down just a little as he starts to get into the gas tank. And it connects with a nice jab. And then there's a right hook from Aldi Alvarez. He's looking to knock him out at this point. That's the only thing you can do about at this point as... There's two quick jabs that have nothing, no power behind them. There's a left jab and a nice straight right hand. They engage again. As he misses the right hook, as he's himself to be wide open for the quick left hook from Calavante. As Calavante may have been setting up to shoot, but uh, Eddie Alvarez uh, aggressively took the initiative. There's a quick punch, doesn't hit, though. 60 seconds left. Alvar Alvarez steps in, looking to hit. Uh, as there's a left jab and there's a body kick. Two, two quick punches, but it doesn't hit either of them. Clear opportunity. Calavante is able to move in fast and clinch with Alvarez. Now he's trying to. Push him up against the ropes, but Alvarez doesn't allow him to be driven back. He blocks the knee strike, and that is the end of the fight. And so that's a close one. It's a close one. I think Alvante is going to win by unanimous decision, though. Yep. And uh, making it five and two, or five and one, five and two. Betty Alvarez, though, as uh, Calavante getting the win. At Brazilian Bushido Fork, Calavante thanks all of his sponsors and all of his fans. Calavante gives a show of respect to his opponent. As now, uh, the Diago Tavares taking on Leonardo Santos as uh, Diago Tavares is 5-0. Leonardo Santos 6-1. Both Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists. Both from Brazil. Henzo Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Leonardo Santos no team for Diago Tavares as uh, my, plus 260, minus 330. 21 years old, 26 years old, 6'1", 161, 6 foot 155. So Leonardo Santos taller, bigger. If I'm going to play the advantage there, Herb Dean's the referee, our judges. Both uh, fighters get a good reaction near the entrances. They're both fighting from their own crowd tonight. So round one begins. Tavares may have been aiming to get in close, but Santos aggressively took the initiative. There's a left jab and misses the vicious right hand. Looks confident, shortening the range. Looks to strike. Looked like he was going to step in and grapple, but Santos simply took the initiative. Santos throws a punch, but Tavares avoids it. There's a quick punch. Doesn't land it, though. There's a takedown attempt from Tavares. Santos partially defends it. Ends up hopping on one foot while Tavares gets a hold of the other one. Tavares drives Santos up against the ropes. There's a attempts a leg sweep. Tries to uh, put Santos on the ground. As Tavares doesn't get the trip, as Santos instead wrestles his way to, into controlling the grapple. As Santos pins Tavares up against the ropes, stomps down on the heart on his hard foot, stomps down on hard on his foot rather than on his hard foot. Jesus, as Tavares throws a few short punches to the ribs, as there's a knee strike to the side of the ribs from Santos. Santos looks for another one, but Tavares works enough separation to pull clear and circle out. As a uh, Tavares comes in, looking for a takedown. Tavares, again, couldn't complete the single leg, but does end up standing, holding a leg, while Santos hops in place on the other. As Tavares drives Santos up against the ropes, looking to sweep a, uh, looks to sweep a leg out from under Santos, so he can take him down with a trip. There's an excellent outside leg trip, which he takes, sweeps Santos down to the ground, where he's left on his back, pulling half guard. Tavares now throws a few weak-looking punches as he decides on his next move. Santos gets some separation, tries to scramble for position. It's a bad choice, though. Tavares seizes that opportunity to leap forward and secure a side control, inside control. Tavares throws a couple of punches designed to keep Santos guessing. Santos pulls half guard. Tavares begins trying to get his leg free of half guard and get a better position. Pass results, uh, pass attempt results on scramble for position as Santos tries to get back up. Santos uh, manages to come out on top with Tavares pulling half guard. Santos attempts to pass half guard and gain better position. Tavares was ready for the scramble, or ready for the pass attempt, and starts to scramble, rather. is now halfway point in the first round. Santos is up first, quickly grabs Tavares, pushing him up against the ropes, using his wrestling skills to prevent Santos from throwing any knee strikes. Santos catches Tavares with a knee strike to the ribs from the clinch, and he's pressed up against the ropes. Uh, tries a knee from uh, Tavares, but he, uh, he wrestles free and circles back to the center. 
Laser take down Dim from Tavares again. Yeah, Santos almost gets away with it, not quite there. He's left hopping while Tavares gets a hold of the leg. Looking to pressure him against the ropes. And now looking for the trip takedown. He has no answer for the slick trip as he is left down under side control. Tavares doing a great job of being the underdog too. He might have won this first round as uh, Tavares throws a few right hands, mainly just trying to catch his breath. Inside control, Tavares throws a couple of bunches designed to keep him guessing. Santos tries to transition the guard, but he can't manage it as Tavares pounds away with rights but fails to land anything significant. Tavares blocks the attempt to pull guard. Tra Tavares tries to pound on Santos, but none of the blows in the land with any degree of power. Santos pulls half guard. Tavares fires off a handful of punches, each easily being blocked with gloves. Using an underhook to set up the strikes, Santos looks, in looks to scramble for position. As there wasn't enough separation, though, as Tavares is able to catch him in secure side control. Tavares unloads some right hands, but Santos deals with them comfortably. As Santos tries to transition the guard, but he can't manage it. And that is the end of the first round. And yeah, looking like all Tavares. I mean, that's just been an incredible job by him. I mean, that Leonardo Santos is going to do something crazy to make this happen. Final round now. Tavares chooses to shoot in on Santos. Santos almost gets away with him. Not quite, though. He's left hopping on while, uh, left hopping while Tavares... Has a hold of one leg as Tavares drives Santos up against the ropes. Tavares looks to sweep a leg out from under Santos so that he is now taken down with a trip. It's unsuccessful though. Santos maintains a good base. Looking for the takedown again. He gets it this time. And it's pretty much all she rode for Leonardo Santos. He's going to have to finish the fight to win this one at this point. Tavares throws a few right hands. So it's mainly just trying to catch his breath. Looking to get some separation but he can't. Looking to try to pass the half guard. Struggling but he cannot find a way past and remains stuck in half guard. Now I feel Santos preparing to scramble and uh, make sure that doesn't happen. Fires off a few punches. They're thrown. Well, they aren't throwing any great force. There's some separation. Tries to scramble from Santos. But again, Tavares is doing a tremendous job. Seizing that opportunity. Santos too slow. Gets caught in side control. Tavares fires off a few punches. They're thrown with any, without any great force. Santos transaction, uh, transitions to uh, half guard. Now fires off a handful of punches. They aren't throwing any great force. In half guard now, Tavares is beginning to work the side control. He passes half guard, but he can't secure side control as Santos starts to scramble. Santos is up first, quickly grabs Tavares, pushing him against the ropes. There's a knee strike. Looking for the knee strike, but again, Tavares works enough separation to pull, clear, and circle out, and that's the end of the fight. The unanimous, unanimous decision for Thiago Tavares as my god. What a performance by that man, 6 and 0. Oh, killed him. I mean, that is. He's a fucking problem. As that is a statement making performance if I've ever seen one. Leonardo Santos, I believe, was ranked, uh, oh, he's 22nd. I thought it was going to be a little higher, actually. So, I mean, still impressive, though. Still, uh, pretty much manhandled him. Tavares' uh, name checks all of his sponsors and thanks all of his fans who came out and turned out and supported him. It's showing respect. Uh, Diago Tavares praises Santos for his skill and toughness. Next fight, Henzo Gracie, Little Nog there, and Antonio Rodrigo Noguera. 10-7-1, one nose contest, 4-3, both from Brazil, 39 years old, 29 years old. Enzo Gracie definitely the oldest guy on this card, as uh, yeah, obviously Enzo Gracie should suit no team for Lil Nog there. Minus 210 for Lil Nog, plus 160 for Enzo Gracie. Cecil Peoples, again, the referee, our ringside judges, as he's got at least 30 pounds on this fucking Lil Nog, plus he's got a couple of inches on him on height. As uh, both fighters get a good reaction during their entrances, they're both fighting in front of home ground the night. Opening bell, they touch gloves. As he can't hit the setup left jab, he catches the nice hook to the ribs. There's a left jab and a beauty of a straight right. And that is looking like he rocked him on that one. As Gracie looks unsteady on his feet as he retreats, that last blow may have rocked him. And there's a big right hook. There's a knockdown. A little knock since, invent since his victory starts unloading with punches. He's getting plastered with shots. Massive rights. Finally, the referee gets in there and stops the fight. Fucking little knock wins by knockout in a minute. Henzo Gracie... Going down the rings after that. Let's see, he retires right now. As Lil Nog name checks all of his sponsors, then he thanks all of his fans who turn out supporting him. Big win for Lil Nog there. Now he's 5 and 3. Jason Mann Miller taking on Fabio Maldonado. 6'2, 205, 6'1, 205. Atlanta, Georgia's. Sapalio, Brazil. As 8, eight and 1, 13 and 7. Freestyle style is uh, Jason Miller. Boxing Jiu Jitsu is Fabio Maldonado, who's Valley Tudo, no team for Jason May and Miller. Minus 300 for Fabio Maldonado, plus 230 for Jason May and Miller. Cecil's staying out there. He's our referee, our judges. Maldonado may have weighed in the same as Miller yesterday, but it clearly has a severe weight advantage now. As Maldonado gets a good reaction as he enters uh, the arena. He's fighting in front of a home crowd of the night. Underway, they touch gloves. Two jabs hit home for Maldonado, then scores on the right cross. There's a jab and a nice straight right hand. There's a weak flick left hand jab from Miller. Fails to find home his jab, but he scores the right cross that lands hard. There's a, two left hands and a nice straight right hand that lands hard. 
Can't connect with the jab, but he catches Mel the right hook to the body. Moves in closer, looking to open up an attack. Preview going to try and get in close to Nair, uh, then Miller, rather, but Maldonado took the initiative first. Jab his wife and Maldonado, then he hits Miller with a straight right hand. Hits a left hand, but he's off tar but the big right hand to the body is off target. As uh, Maldonado can't connect with the step strikes, he hits Miller with a beauty of a straight right, moves in on Miller, preparing the throw. Miller with a jab, no power behind it at all. There's a left hand, but Miller avoids the big right punch. There's two left hands on Maldonado, Miller again avoids the big right. Miller's rushing in, worried about getting potentially hit if he gets close enough to grapple. Can't connect with the jab, then lands with the big right, with the uh, right hand of the body, rather, and moves in closer, ready to attack. Miller hits a jab, but has no power behind it at all. Attempts to land a hook to the body from Maldonado, but that fails to land. There's a left hand. Miller avoids the uh, big right to the body. There's a jab and the beauty of a straight right. I mean, Maldonado is just fucking this man up for five minutes. Still doesn't knock him down or anything, as there's a left jab and a right hook to the body. Right to the ribs, to be exact, as Miller... Uh, as, uh, Maldonado, rather, fails to find home his jab, lands the right hand of the body, halfway point, t Miller talking a little trash now, there's, comes in looking to strike, can't connect with the step strikes, there's a straight, nice straight right hand that lands hard, as, uh, again, Miller clearly respects his opponent's strike, and he's very worried about getting close enough to grapple, there's two left hands, and then there's a nice right hook to the ribs, hits the left hand, Miller steps back to avoid the right to the body, Maldonado is slowing down just a little, starts to get into the gas tank, Miller had looked like he was angling the grapple, but couldn't take the initiative. A jab is, hits home from Maldonado, then hits Miller to the right to the side of the ribs. There's another left jab and a right to the side of the ribs. And again, we looked like we're about to see Miller try to get some grappling initiative, but uh, Maldonado was more aggressive, took the initiative first. There's a jab, a nice straight right hand that lands hard. Can't hit the step, left jab, lands the right hand to the body. Appeared to be going to try to get in close, but Maldonado took the initiative first. Jab his wife and Maldonado, then he lands a big right hand to the body. Maldonado can't hit a step left jab and scores with the right hand to the body. Jab his wife and Maldonado, then there's a crunching right hook. As again, he's still on his feet. A punch from Maldonado fails to land. He seizes that chance, Maldonado to clinch. Tries to suck Maldonado down to the ground by wrapping his legs around his waist, pulling guard. So Maldonado defends the attempt to drag him down, takes control of the grapple too. Now he's looking to muscle him against the ribs. He can't do it though, as he ends up being out wrestling the grapple. Again, looking to try to get his legs around the waist of Maldonado when they pull him down the ground. It's successful. Now he's sucked him into the guard. Looking for an arm bar from the bottom. Maldonado doesn't let the arm get taken. And that's the end of the round. Wow. So, look, I could sense that that was what Jason Miller was trying to do. He's trying to rope-a-dope him into getting taken down. As uh, he, If he would have got that arm bar, he, it would have been successful. But, obviously, you're seeing Maldonado is fucking him up standing. Miller, uh, Jason May and Miller's going to do something uh, different, because that strategy did not work at all, though he did tire him out, though, so maybe the second round is where he can pounce on him and get a finish. As Maldonado fails to find him, his jab catches Miller with the right hook to the body. Another jab that's wide, but he catches Miller with the right hook to the body, can't connect with, uh, he connects with a nice jab, and then hits a nice straight right hand that lands hard. He's finally dazed him with that one, as Miller backs off, covering up. Maldonado comes forward, he knows that he has a chance of victory, Miller's trapped up against the ropes with nowhere to go. And there's a right hook, and he's barely able to stand anymore. The ropes is the only reason he's still upright. Maldonado now looking to get a Muay Thai clinch. He struggles against it. He doesn't get caught. He's doing a great job of buying time to recover. He manages to clear his head circle away from the ropes back of the center. As there's, he fails to find him a jab. There's another beauty of a straight right. Starting to have to push himself now. His corner responds by urging him on a little louder. There's a jab, and then there's a nice right hook to the ribs. There's a fails to find him his jab and lands a big right hand and immediately covers up. He's trying to retreat. He is dazed with that one. He's trying to get into a Muay Thai clinch again. He has it hooked as Miller is too dazed to muster any sort of defense, serious defensive action. As he maintains control of the clinch, despite Miller trying to grapple out of it now. As he's looking to get a knee strike to the chest, but it's comes from a bad angle, didn't have much power behind it. He still maintains the control of the clinch. So now he can't maintain it anymore as Miller wrestles way out of the clinch. Now he's looking to wrestle him down to the ground, as he gets pulled down, gets sucked into the guard, he blocks Miller, tries to sweep from the guard, attempts to pass guard, gain better position, as well, he passes guard, but he loses control momentarily, scramble begins, Miller ends up having to pull half guard, losing out on the scramble, pounds away, but Miller calmly deals with him, he's breathing very hard now, blocks the tent to move from half guard to full guard, and that's the end of the fight. Not impressive at all, was Jason May and Miller there, in his debut, he's got his fucking ass kicked, though, I will say this, I did say that it wasn't, uh, you know, impressive, but he Kind of impressive he didn't get knocked down. He got the shit knocked out of him pretty much the entire 15 minutes. I mean, he landed a lot of shots. Well, you know, 50, or uh, almost, yeah, damn near 50 shots. You combine the knee and the, plus the ground strikes. I mean, yeah, 51 strikes in total. I mean, that's nuts. 
Jason Van Miller uh, somehow doesn't get knocked out as Fabio Maldonado gives a name check to everyone that Bruce Valley to all of his various sponsors and all of his friends, family, and supporters. He celebrates his Pride debut victory and says that he's already looking forward to the next fight. Go main event, Jeremy Gumby Horn taking on Merleo Ninja Hua as uh, Jeremy Horn. Merleo Ninja Hua, 43-11-4, 15-3, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai Jiu-Jitsu. Militage Fighting Systems, Hoos Valley Tudo, plus 230, minus 300, 511, 205, 61, 205. As a referee for this bout, Herb Dean, our judges at ringside, who, uh, Merlin Ninja, who is fighting in front of home ground tonight, he gets a big cheer as he makes his entrance, fight begins. Both fighters move in and engage. Horn misses the big right hand, putting him off bounds, allowing Kuhu to attack with a quick left jab and a kick to the leg. Two fighters engage. Who misses the right hook and gets counted the right hand. Looking a bent tense, Horn moves around the ring. Hua shoots in, looking for a takedown, gets a hold of its leg, but Horn remains standing, hopping on the other foot, as Hua can't get Horn down, and so he settles for pushing him up against the ropes, smothering Horn against the ropes and stomps down on his foot. Looks to set up a trip takedown. He gets a nice inside leg trip, and Horn is forced to pull guard, trying to pass to half guard. He passes guard, but Horn was ready and starts the scramble, as Horn manages to come out on top with side control. Horn throws some small strikes, but it's clear, just taking a moment to catch his breath. So it tries to transition the guard, but he can't manage it. Inside control, Horn catches his breath, continues to throw a couple of punches to the body. Tries to pull guard on Horn, but doesn't get any of the attempt. He throws a few weak-looking punches, decides his next move. Horn uh, tries to move the guard, but Horn doesn't allow it. There's a few punches, he catches his breath. Tries to transition the guard, but he can't manage it. As again, a few right hands, just taking a moment to plan ahead. Blocks the transition to guard. Horn is just doing a great job. They stand him back up, step in the strike. Horn's off target with the left jab, connects with the right hand though, he misses the left jab, hits the right hook, come together and strike, Horn's off target, but he scores the, uh, another right hook, again, who is missing the left jab, he connects with the right hand, so they're missing on their setup strikes, but they're landing the actual shots that matter, so they meet in the center, who counters the right hand with a jab and a right hook that gets ducked, as who wanting to grapple comes forward, and he's willing to, to risk a few shots to close the distance, there's a 1-2, but who avoids both of them, who is able to grab Horn and tries to wrestle Horn backwards up against the ropes. He doesn't manage it, though. Horn defended it well. Horn prevents Hua from hitting a knee strike. As he's looking to muscle Horn back, back up against the ropes. Horn ends up backed against the ropes now. As looks to sweep a leg in order to, sweep, to execute the sharp trip. And he gets it. Executes an outside leg trip, sweeping Horn to the mat where he pulls half guard. Throws a few weak looking punches as he decides on this next move. So Hua feels Horn preparing to scramble for position and makes sure that it doesn't happen. Sua looks to pass half guard and get side control. Horn allows the pass, but it's just deployed to allow him to try and scramble. Horn manages to come out on top, holding Hua down from the uh, from behind with a waist lock. As now 60 seconds left, Horn's too slow to stop Hua from getting back up, and he does so, and he does get back control. Horn gives up back control, steps back, unhappy with his position. Horn throws a quick punch, or a quick one too, but doesn't land either blow. With a clear opportunity, Hua is able to move in fast and clinch with Horn. Horn preventing Hua from it hitting a knee strike, and that's the end of the first round. As a, yeah, I mean, all Jeremy Horn from from what I stay, from what I see, though Merlio does have two out of three takedowns. Obviously, the strikes are not working, but he's passing on the ground. He's doing his takedowns. So if he can have a solid second round where he's just very dominant and can land a lot of strikes, he can end up winning this fight. Battle for the second round, they meet in the center, start to strike, there's a flurry of activity, but neither fighter can able to, is able to land a telling strike, Horn misses the head kick, Horn deals with two punches without issue, he, his guard remains solid, they engage, as Hua lands a left jab, but he has the right hand absorbed on the gloves, he misses the left hand jab, and he had, hits the right hand, as Hua looked like he was angling for a takedown attempt, but he couldn't take the initiative, as an attempt to land a hook to the body from, the, from Horn, he fails to land, Horn connects the jab, but Hua avoids the big right, Tua steps forward, willing to take a few shots as long as it, it gets close enough to wrestle. Horn can't connect with the sub strikes, but it lands a low kick to the legs. Tua seizes that chance and grabs Horn to a clinch. He tries to knee Horn, but gets blocked. Hua is looking to muscle Horn backwards if it gets the ropes. As Hua achieves it, pins Horn to the ropes. As now, uh, there's a look at, with the ropes tripping, uh, trapping Horn. Hua looks to, for the takedown. He gets it. He sweeps the legs, sending Horn to the map with a beautiful move. He gets side control of it. There's a knee to the ribs. Fires off a few punches, tries to catch his breath. Horn tries to pull guard on Hua, but doesn't get any of the attempt. Hua throws a few strikes, but they're without venom. Minute left now, throws a few right, uh, throws a few right hands. He takes a moment to play in the head. He's trying to pull guard, but Hua doesn't get any of the attempt. There's another knee strike to the ribs. Pounds away, but is unable to, uh, unable to inflict much damage on Horn. That's the end of the fight and end of the round. Yeah, I think Mario did enough to win that fight. Let's see if the judges agree. Yep. 
It's a unanimous decision win. It was rated poor. As uh, Jeremy Horn has now lost three straight. Yep. Might have to give him a tomato can to beat at this point. We shall see. But uh, Merleo at 16 and 3. Impressive as hell. As a giving thanks, Merleo praises team at Who's Valley 2 to his various sponsors and the fans who came out supporting. He praises Horn for the tough fight. Main event time. Ron Faircloth taking on Anderson the Spider Silva. 5'9", 205, 6'2", 205. An 8-inch reach advantage is Anderson Silva going to have. 17 and 4, 13, 3 and 1. Hybrid fighting, Muay Thai background. Greg Jackson's mixed martial arts. Who's Valley Tudo? Minus 300, plus 250. This is going to be a hell of a fight. As the Prime Middleweight title on the line for this fight. Herb Dean's the referee, our ringside judges. They weighed in the same yesterday, but it's clear that Ron Faircloth's going to have a significant weight advantage now. Silva gets a good reaction from the fans. He enters uh, the arena. He's fighting from a home crowd tonight. Fight begins. They touch gloves. Faircloth looked like he was angling for a grapple, but couldn't take the initiative. There's a left jab and a beauty of a straight right. As again, he's trying to get in close, but Silva again took the initiative. As he can't connect with a set-up left jab, and he hits a sensational high right head kick, and he knocks him out. <laughs> Unbelievable. Quick work for Anderson Silva. Knocks him out in 32 seconds. The spider has been unleashed in Pride of Sea. My god. I thought it was going to be... I mean... You kind of expected it to have Anderson Silva do great standing against Ron Faircloth, but I didn't think a knockout in 32 seconds. Unbelievable. As Anderson Silva gives a name trick, they run a Hoos Valley to all of his various sponsors and all of his fans, family, and supporters who celebrates the Pride Middleweight title defense and poses for photographers with his belt around his waist. What a performance for Ron Faircloth. We just barely beat the high critical rating. Commercial rating at 95, as at least the main event was good. So yeah, am increased pop everywhere. Hell yeah. A win, win for us. As, yeah, I think that will do it for this episode, obviously, as that is the end of the show. Thank you all for watching, as we will catch you guys next time for what I believe, I believe, is going to be the Critical Countdown show. I could be wrong on that. It might be a, a two-show period, as uh, we're going to kind of wait and see here, as it, hopefully the game does not crash. That would be disappointing, to say the goddamn least. Now Silva's now number one. I think it's well deserved. As no, it's uh, Pride 32, the real deal. So this is actually the last Pride like event number show that actually happened. You see there, I have Pride 33, but I haven't came up with a name for it yet because we're now going into the territory of unknown. You know, the, the last kind of numbered Pride show was Pride 32, the real deal. So we might have to. Uh, we're gonna have to be creative now going forward with some of our new names. So that should be exciting, and then. Uh, the American Bushido card, which is in July, which is why, you know, we're actually a lot of shows before we get to the Critical Countdown show. But we just kind of make sure that we have enough for everybody so that there's no, like, alternates. Even though we have them in place, we still don't want to use them. So if we can push back the show, we'll push back the show. It's no problem. So, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time for the Pride 32 Real Deal Show.